when I think of Lucid, I think of this opportunity to take a step back from the car industry as we've known it and kind of make a, a cut or a break or turn the page on, on a, a chapter or even close the book and start, start a new chapter. It's a chance for us to rethink how we approach the automobile and build a, build a brand around that. Um, I think it's very challenging for the traditional industry to, to close that book and open the new one because they've got all this built up, all this pride and methods and, and so much of it has been so important for so long, but now so much of it is not. I don't wanna say it's meaningless, but it's not necessarily applicable and it can actually be a hindrance. And I, when I think of Lucid, it's our chance to say, you know what, let's start this clean. We know where all of this came from. Let's build a new identity and a new brand about where we're going in the next 20, 30, 40 years. That to me is Lucid. I joined Lucid to really, um, I had reached a point in my traditional career where I wanted a bigger challenge. I was also getting to the point where I didn't see the point of designing another internal combustion car. I just had reached that stage where it's like, okay, I've done this dozens and dozens of time. It's been incredibly rewarding and I'm super lucky to have had that, um, but let's get on with the future and get there as quickly as possible. Good morning and do that through bringing as much fascination to the space and push the boundaries everywhere we possibly can and create a brand around that. But if you can really achieve that pinnacle position where there's a true fascination with the product, with the brand and what it stands for, I think you, you can change hearts and minds. Good morning. Good morning, how's it going? It's going good. Do you want to do the team check-in tomorrow, like at 10.30, if that's okay? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'll cancel that. We're I'll doing the development of Lucid Air Thank and our future program, Gravity, with fairly compressed teams. And that's design, that's engineering, that's drivetrain groups. Hey, guys. And we're doing it in a very collaborative manner, all in the same facility, no silos. I think that is different than the traditional industry is set up where you have the chassis engineering team is at one tech center and the design group is siloed off doing their own thing. And they only come together through really formalized processes. And it's often very adversarial. So getting that common synergy of vision is so very, very difficult to do in the traditional car industry. Where here, it's, it's, it's really just a handful of people that need to have a common view on things and then it's go time. Today, we've done our first laser welding on the door frames in Casa Grande. I think that really stems from my first conversations with Peter Rawlinson. He saw that design and engineering is a codependent relationship, right? We can't accomplish truly excellent results without working closely together. And that's the culture we foster here for sure. It really, really does feel minimal. I think being in this entrepreneurial startup environment, you view it in an accelerated pace. It's 2020, we're in this modern period where amazing things happen just overnight. You know, uh, every week, every month, there's something new coming that's like, wow. Uh, innovation and technology and progress. And I think that, that that time has come to the auto industry. And so we are now in that kind of cycle. And that's a very rewarding. When we very first started on really mobilizing Lucid, we had to dig deep and say, okay, what is our reason to exist? You know, does the world really need another car brand? And that forces you to kind of look inward and say, okay, why, why do I want to be part of this? Why would other people take any interest in this? And I think we immediately came back to the origins of all of this. And inevitably it comes back to this California topic. To me, it's the duality of this place because it has all that innovation, all that technology, all this pioneering spirit where people are coming from all over the world to do something amazing. 
And then at the same time, you have this incredible geographic location, which has all this diverse landscape. And you take those two things and you weigh them out, and one's completely on the intellectual side, the innovation, the engineering, the mind side. And then you have all this natural beauty, the lifestyle, the creativity, the human component of California. And it's this heart and mind balance. And that became the, the DNA. As we established Heart and Mind as our DNA, we really applied it to everything. We applied it to the vehicle, to the brand look and feel and tone, the photography, the color, the lighting of everything that we do, the web, the digital experience, even our user experience and UI in the vehicle has a heart and mind lens that it's been conceived through. And believe it or not, we've even used that heart and mind premise throughout our working methodology. When you think about the balance between the engineering team and the design team and how, how that comes together, um, all of that is, is kind of derived and, and it's taken very serious because we think that is the that is a formula, in a way, for, for, for the brand. A brand is really taking the mission and the values of a company and really translating that into a visual and tonal language. Historically, the strongest brands, when you close your eyes and think about them, they have a single word. The brands with the clearest idea are the strongest brands. So for Lucid, success could be defined from a brand perspective. If in a couple of years from now, if, you know, if someone imagines what the Lucid brand is, it's human technology, the heart and the mind. If we've really communicated that idea well, I think we've succeeded. The lucid photography style, it's not about chasing perfection. It's not about having a poised moment. It's being authentic to where the product is. It's about catching a moment in time and being very true to that moment in time. And it's okay if sunlight glares off the car. It feels natural if the car is not perfectly centered in frame, if it's cropped a little bit. It's looking for those details that makes the photograph feel more natural, feel more intimate, feel more like something someone can relate to. Our car is both uniquely challenging and uniquely beautiful to photograph. Depending on where in the sky the light is, how it's bouncing off the environment, the car will read drastically different. It might be more pristine in one environment, it might feel more aggressive in one environment. Different kind of proportions or lines of the car will read different depending on the time of day. Its surface detailing, its lines, its highlights are highly unique. You know, the car has a strong highlight down the shoulder of the car and then allowing shadow to fill in the, the body side so that it really registers that sculpted quality. That light's cool now. We're starting to get the little like wash, are you dreamy? There's certain angles of the car, of course, that are good. Front and rear three quarters are particularly stunning in this car. It really shows the technical detailing of the front and rear and the sculpted quality of the body side. The nice thing about having a, a kind of unique and pretty defined photographic style is that it really unites all the different brand touch points. You know, you see the same style of photographs in our showrooms, on our website, in our magazines. In many ways, it's the calling card of Lucid. We're able to keep graphic language, architectural systems, very clean, very minimal. And the photography is the thing that gives that human editorial counterpart to that throughout everything. So a big part of the brand is our digital and print design. So these are things like magazine, website, mobile app, even car UI. The strategy we took there was again to kind of use this heart and mind philosophy. On the, the mind side, it's about having really technical detailing in terms of the graphics and having technical descriptions in our animations and written copy. On the heart side, it's really pushing our photography to an editorial, emotional, and kind of lifestyle-driven style. So that creates a great balance. And as I mentioned, these principles even kind of carry into how we've designed our car UI. It's technical, it's precise, um, but at the same time, it has a soft, warm human feel to it. When it comes to fonts, we've chosen a technical sans serif font, but we also pair that with a more humanist serif font. So, you know, one is highly clean, minimal, technical. The other is expressive and it has a beautiful flow to it. So that encapsulates the heart and the mind there. 
For color palettes, we have a beautiful blue, rich, gray palette that speaks to the technical prowess of the company. But we pair that with a gold, brown, earthy palette that really talks about the humanity of the brand. So the way we came to that combination was this perfect moment in California where the earth meets the ocean. So you have the blues and the golds, and it speaks to that heart and mind duality very well. In walking into a Lucid retail showroom, you're enveloped in the brand, and we really wanted that to happen. It's very warm, it's very approachable. You feel like you could spend a lot of time there. So you're surrounded by our color palette, our materiality. You see our imagery and video content through the store. You see our merchandise is on display. We're about to enter partnerships with California creators and California luxury brands, people that inspire us and do co-design, co-branded projects with them. Also in our showrooms, of course, is our car, but kind of uniquely to us, you can also explore that in virtual reality. So we have in most stores a VR seating buck where you can click on the headset and see the car in, in a variety of landscapes and color choices and things like that. But part of what we really wanted to do is if you can't visit a store, you can have a similar experience online. Our configurator is, I think, we put a lot of energy and innovation into that. It's an incredibly unique experience. So it takes game engine technologies and makes it a very rich interactive experience. So you can click between different backgrounds for the car. You can zoom around the car to different camera angles. You can open trunks and fronks and doors and really get a sense of the car, even if you only have a laptop at home. Part of our product and brand strategy was really looking at the shift in values when people are thinking about a luxury product. So you imagine a luxury product used to confer privilege, status, you know, it had to be a name brand, so to speak. It had to kind of had a lot of heritage in the brand. It's become now about, you know, luxury brands have to have be socially environmentally conscious. They have to be kind of unique. Uh, they have to have like modern minimal design. They have to have some kind of technological impact. It's gone beyond luxury in a lot of ways. It's gone into something we're starting to refer to as post-luxury. A big part of the post-luxury topic was a degree of minimalism, um, or I like to think of it more like subtraction, where you look at the exterior of the car, you look at the interior of the car and you say, okay, we've established this incredible silhouette, this overall profile and shape on the outside of the car. Where do we need details for function? Lighting, airflow, mirrors, door handles, you know, all the things that, that have to be there. And how do we do those in the most minimal way possible? We were asking ourselves, do we really need that extra line? Do we need that extra detail? Can the, the lights be slimmer and even cleaner? Does it need to have that facet? And we kind of come in and, and distill it and distill it and just get it down to this one line, this one detail, and then everything else we can subtract. Getting that balance is, is really, really important. So I start with setting up the wheel in a correct position with the wheelbase. It's important because it allows you to see uh, what proportion you're working with and you start to position the lines in relationship to that wheel position, like where the cabin is sitting and where fender is sitting. The first impression of Lucid Air, we want it to be um, stunning, but not in a, in a loud way, um, just in an elegant way. And it's really inviting you to um, to make you want to drive. The exterior is really all about that, you know, like what would be the impression uh, when you first see the car. So Lucid Air has one simple single line going across the car, and this line goes straight from the nose to the rear door, and it continues to the rear, and it carries all the way it's simple, but it unites all the elements together. Without this, the front will feel much shorter, um, but this line is really elongating the side of the car, even without having a long hood. The D-pillar trim is designed, inspired by the aircraft wings, and that's reflected in our door panel rocker theme in the lower and also in the front corner. We're heavily influenced by the design of the aircraft. It's all about very simple front fascia, um, minimizing the graphic and really controlling the airflow. 
and the nose and the overall kind of shape from headlamp to the hood also came from that inspiration, yeah. The aerodynamic teams work really closely, obviously, with the exterior team. And from the beginning, we knew that we had to make an aerodynamic car. But what's interesting is we never set out to make the best aerodynamic car in a segment. We wanted to make it very efficient, but the result really came from having so many simulations and pretty much all details and any leading edges we were um, testing multiple times. It was really about finding that balance and the sweet spot where we are happy that the car looks clean and beautiful, but JC is also happy. What I'm thinking of is the deck lead, if we're going to keep the main shape, the plan view shape or not. Sometimes we just sit down, start ideating sections together, and sometimes you get inspired by their ideas and their suggestions, and, and you can make something really cool out of it. And when we achieved a 0.21 drag coefficient, it was a really exciting moment, you know, not just for, for them, but for, for us, for sure. In the front, instead of a signature grill, we have nose blade with a metal finish with very slim uh, light signature. It's like four millimeter, but it's going all the way across the width of the front of the vehicle. And the opening of the headlamp is so slim, it's only like 30 mil. It's got just enough high beam and low beam, and it's very efficient, very bright. And I think that's very special for a feature that really creates our fascia. We wanted to really emphasize our headlamp module technology and also minimizing that opening is minimizing the turbulence and um, wake for aerodynamics. Lighting is probably one of the elements that I worked the longest together with the lighting team and I was always sketching very slim kind of opening to the light, but really the module came from lighting team and the technology was already getting developed. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that's awesome. That's cool. It's amazing how much the engineering team were able to work with us to our request and they were eager to really push the boundaries, sometimes more than we did. I'm really happy that we were able to achieve this like side lit condition. Yeah. And working so closely together, you start to learn their priorities, their principles, and I really started to understand what they had to work with um, their regulations, um, their limitations, or where they can actually push. And they also learn from us like what we really care about, where we really want to push. And that learning experience and that relationship is so critical to making the best decision possible. Um, and every decision is made not because of what we believe is more important, but what customer will be experiencing with this vehicle, um, because that's the most important part. So the shut line of the trunk really continues from the trim, and it allows the tail lamp to be single lamp without any big cut line. The most wide single tail lamp in the market. We wanted to hide and integrate all the kind of regulatory lightings, like the side reflectors and side marker lights, and everything is very um, carefully integrated into our main theme of the design. So the way the LiDAR is sitting and the way the radar is sitting in the front, you don't really see it as an afterthought. You can really see that we're trying to integrate it and hide it or celebrate it. Usually when you're designing for other OEMs, you usually get the hard points and package drawings. And there is some wiggle rooms, but you're sort of designing for that specific package. And here we get to work with exterior body engineering team, actually defining what that hard point needs to be. So the height of the car, the way car is sitting, the width of the car, the overhang, length, and to, to rear overhang. All those positioning, we're working with the team to make sure that it's safe, but still achieving our dream proportion. 
So I think that is very special because we can keep our design integrity from start to end. That's it. Getting that balance between simplicity, sleekness, an effortless kind of sculpture and volume to the car. To me, that's kind of the emotional appeal. As you come closer to the car and you see the materials and all the metal work on the outside of the car and the technology and the precision and the seamlessness, those are a little bit more on the mind side that kind of intrigues you. The same thing on the interior, you know, we, we could have made the interior a very linear and blocky and, and technical everywhere, but I felt like now we've got to find this balance between really high tech displays that are contoured to the driver and not just prismatic everywhere and try and give you that form together with this high tech function. And lastly, I think it's really about the materials. It's the tactile nature. You know, I think there's often pressure on designers to be like, okay, what's the future? How do I show the future as fast as possible? And you end up in this kind of like Blade Runner space really quickly. And I think that that is often a turnoff for a lot of people. And finding the balance between something that's incredibly futuristic and very high tech and very technical, but somehow warm and inviting in, in a nice place to be and it's tactile, that, that is again, this heart and mind topic. To me, bringing that all together on a product in this post luxury positioning is, is really what we're trying to do. We see heart and mind is so clearly now because that became our philosophy. But for me, it's all about warm, emotional value where you want to touch, you want to be, and you're beautiful to look at and you just want to own it and touch it. I mean, when I design something, my whole thing is I want people to touch it with their eyes even before you come close. And then you draw them in and you're like, oh my God, I want to touch it now. And as soon as you touch that, there is instant physical connection. But I also want you to feel welcome, open, inviting. And that's my role. So knowing that the front, I want you to make things a little more driver's oriented, ever so little, everything's angled towards the driver. So when you look at it from top view, it's literally a, a cockpit surrounded by two L-shaped, it's all screen, and you have a control. And the steering wheel has all the tactile, like pilot. And then the back seat, this enormous leg room. From outside, you walk in and you open the door, second door, and instantly you have to look like everywhere. Where did this space come from? Ultimately, every single vehicle I lose it, I want to have that feel. California landscape, it's not just one thing. You see the wave, you see this whole movement of water with the sound and it creates this monumental shape. So when you look at our door, rollover is convex and normally it just continues to the armrest. And it's ever so subtle, but the concave starts right above here. It goes down and then comes back up and becomes our armrest. And that casts shadow and light. Something really beautiful about this is even the speaker, even the hard part has this continuous movement of a wave. Normally you will see all the speaker grills behind it, but how we angle all these ribs so you don't see through all the components behind the speaker. All you see is a beautiful leather texture and the beautiful sound coming next to you. This positive negative surface play for me is very important. It happens throughout the vehicle. When you look at IP, there is a band of dark ring that goes around from the front over your door and goes all the way to the back seat and comes back. It's a ring and I wanted to create a belt line. That's the ring, that's the horizon. And that grounds everything. But we also wanted to make the IP topper thinner and lighter than it is. So when you look at the, the passenger, there's a movement of concave and convex. And not only that is happening sculpturally, we actually separate the materials so you could actually see the movement. So that makes things 
light and it's really thin, although it's a one big volume, because you can't really make things too light, otherwise it'll look weak. So creating that balance that is light and open, but yet feel grounded because it's a car and you want to feel safe. So the notion of positive, negative, it started with the beautiful gesture. And once you implement that into vehicle, and it re kept repeating itself, which creates this harmony, because it has the same theme throughout the um, interior. When we started the interior design, we knew it was going to be heavily controlled through screen. But one thing that's lacking is human touch. There's beauty in touching a button and feeling right away, this instant gratification. But there are things that are very basic. Window up and down, door open, close, volume up and down, fan speed up and down, temperature up and down. You don't really need screen. Those should be designed the way it should function. When you increase the volume and you just roll one finger and there is this, this metal and you feel and then the feedback is instantly, not only your fingertips, but your ear. It's the full body experience, which you don't really get through screen. And I think it's very important to have those two coexist. And I think that's also a part of creating post-luxury experience, not compromising anything. We believe you, we could, you could have everything. And why not? You know, you, you get to have everything and even those little tactiles but it's very human, it's the craftsmanship, it's the precision that we spend, and that is lucid value. Every little thing needs to be precisely designed. We really, really wanted to emphasize the space in vehicle. So having this canopy roof actually allows us to celebrate that and inviting the exterior as part of your interior design. We have to think about what's outside of this canopy glass because that is part of our color, that is part of our scene. So it's, it's really holistic feel and I feel like we're painting, sculpting together with CMF team because everything they designed was to enhance our vision. It doesn't work like who does it first, it actually evolves together and that's again back to having one vision, having one goal together. Some may say it's impossible, but it is possible here. <laughs> CMF is really the golden thread that connects brand, UX, interior and exterior design. It's connecting the functionality and enhancing the language. It's getting things organized here. When we look at like what Joanne's doing with the language of the interior, we do look at the materials in a way like, what are we gonna highlight? Where are the opportunities to add dimension? Perfect. All of that is harmonizing these materials and how they're sort of moving from one space in the interior to the next. So from the IP to the front door, to the rear door, to the, the back deck, onto the seats. Those are all interconnected parts and pieces that we're looking at. It was always our desire and our goal to have materials that felt authentic. We didn't want to put wood in there that didn't feel like wood. And also processing it less is better for the environment. But also, you can still feel the haptic of the wood. You know, it feels like a beautiful piece of furniture, not a high gloss piece of plastic. And I do think that we got to a place in the industry where it was really hard to tell what was real and what wasn't real. And even our leather has, it's probably the most supple leather in the industry. We worked very hard to get that quality in place. Joanne and her team talked a lot about the front seat being more of this performance part of the car, and that makes a lot of sense. That's where the driver is, right? I mean, it's very active up there. And then they were talking about how the back seat, it's more of a passive place. It's a calmer experience. And so the idea of doing a two-color interior made a lot of sense. I think it's just a different experience when you get into our car, whether it's in the front seat or the back seat. 
It was a lot of fun to find our path, and there was a lot of wanting it to be different and setting ourselves apart. But once I started having the daily dialogue with Derek and a lot of conversations with the interior and exterior designers, it just became more clear and more authentic how we ended up with our California story, leaning into California DNA again. I've talked a lot about how we came to developing our themes that were based on a time of day, a location within California, and how that time of day, the lighting was very unique. That piece really guided me in so many ways, because otherwise I'm just designing something beautiful, and we really wanted to be able to create an authentic story about why we were doing it. You know, there has to be some real meaning behind what you're designing. So this is our dream edition called Santa Monica. It's probably one of our least contrast interiors. It's quite beautiful. So this is our ceramic leather. It is a Napa leather, which has a very light finish on it. It's very supple, feels beautiful. It smells wonderful. And we've combined that with our graphite leather. So you can really see that it's a nice combination. We've also have a beautiful perforated leather. We've worked very hard on our perforation because we have a um, ventilation system, not only heating, but cooling system in our seats. And so that perforation had to be very specific in terms of airflow. So it's a diamond perforation and you'll be seeing it very soon. Next, I want to show you the alpaca wool and 100% recycled polyester textile that we're going to be offering. The beautiful story here is that the alpacas come in these beautiful colors, and so we don't have to dye the wool that comes from the alpaca. So we're reducing the dye stuffs, which is really nice from a sustainable story. We're, being, we're able to use less chemicals, and then we do use the 100% recycled polyester, and again, that adds, um, you know, another component to our sustainable story. Next, we have the ceramic carpet. And then lastly, the wood is a silvered eucalyptus. It is an open pore wood, so it has a very natural touch to it. And I think it gives this whole palette a little bit of a warmth. And then we have our metal details, and this is our platinum trim for our interior. And sort of adding that to the group, this is going to be our Santa Monica interior. So I'd like to share Tahoe too. That's another one of our exciting interiors. So we'll start with our saddle leather. Um, I think you can see that it's got a softer tone to it, and that was definitely intentional. And it comes with our lucid black, and this was based on our sunset. This has the saddle color carpet, and our wood that we selected is called a carbon oak wood. You can still see the warm undertones of the wood, so it does look like wood. It has a great natural feel to it. And then we also developed a perforation for it. And lastly, our graphite alpaca. And I think you will see how nice this looks and sort of pulls the theme together. And we'll just put that right up there. Yeah, so I love it. Another one of our themes is called Mojave. And it's our darkest interior, which is one of my favorites. Some of the challenges of building a palette and a series of uh, different colors for our interior were we wanted to try to share some of the colors that they could be interchangeable, but still very different. And Mojave is one of those interiors where we were able to take the graphite gray from Santa Monica and the lucid black from Tahoe and create our Mojave theme. So it starts here if we go this way. And you can see from this that it's quite dark, but still has a nice contrast to it. Also, we do have Alcantara, and that's a quite beautiful material. 
And then we have our wood. We're also sharing the, the carbon oak with the Tahoe theme. And you can see that it makes a really nice, warm quality. We also have our platinum trim and we have our graphite carpet. And then we're also sharing the graphite alpaca. We also have a perforation. Again, it would be in the diamond. This is just a placeholder for now. And that's it. I love this theme. I like the warmth of the textile in the wood. I think it gives it a little bit less of a Teutonic feel and a little more of a California vibe. I think we all know electrification is the future. And it's always this question of, you know, well, what will it take to get there sooner? And I think to do that is, um, it's the right thing to do. It needs to happen. We, you know, we have to will it to happen through excellence, through great design, through great experience. Good night. Everything we want to do to make owning an amazing electric vehicle as aspirational and as attractive to as many people as possible. That's our ambition. If you can achieve that, I think that's our greatest chance to have an impact.